Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Rodeo Time, the podcast. It's a great day. It's a new day, January 4th, uh, 2022. So uh, here we are. We're on to the next one. And um, it's a new year. It's a new, it's not a new Rodeo Time. Same same great crew. We've added a few. Same old crap. Same old crap. But this is our first podcast. <laughs> Different year. <laughs> We've got with us uh, one of the uh, Rodeo Time friends, of the family, uh, Corey Anderson with Total Feeds. Thank Pow- you for having me. Donnie. Powering. Uh, Donnie invited me. We had a, that was a good commercial. <laughs> I, I, you guys had a commercial. For the NFR. Yeah, for the NFR. I I am responsible for making Dale Brisby a star because I put him on a commercial at the NFR, right? Yep. I, yep. I'm responsible now. And it played over and over. That's what people say. I was like, dude, your commercial played a lot. <laughs> it did. I was like, I have I have definitely aligned myself with that company. It was like three times a night. I was well, say, night. every time I looked at the TV, it was on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I felt like. Um, yeah. it's There's no mistake in like what Dale Brisby feeds. Yeah. Because like occasionally like I'll get down into the weeds and be like, and get technical, like. How bad I was early on that. <laughs> have I posted, have I tagged Total Feeds today, you know? And th- there's some pissed off people that they're with their truck volume, like, up too loud. <laughs> they were waiting for that, that, golden, that, 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 that golden wisdom <laughs> yeah. to come out and they got a horn. <laughs> or, like, have you ever seen, like, a baby get scared? <laughs> yeah. Like, the way they jerk, like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody out there. Human, like grown humans did that, yeah. not just babies. We can have Blythe cut that out. I just <laughs> or little. just turn it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I scared anyways, myself. <laughs> so like, I'll be like, I'll be like, when was the last time I tagged Total Feeds? And then I'll look in my DMs, and it'll be like nine messages. Like I can't find. To, to, that's people's main problem. Yeah, it's like they'll be they'll live oh, off like in the, the corner car. of the the world, yeah. and you know. Well, there's 19 other feeds you can't get either, you know, in our defense. But, um, yeah, talk to your dealer. I'm working on it. I got I got uh, 1,400 dealers, but I, I, we've got a new plant coming on board. We're going to try to open up a whole new territory with this new plant up in Sioux City, Iowa. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, I hope it works out because, man, that's everywhere I go. That's the question I get more than anything else. <laughs> well, that means that your marketing is like, a plus. Killing it. That's because you brought on Dale Brisby a number of years ago. You're welcome. Hashtag. And all I did, sorry, you know what sorry. I did? I, I took your, your woe boon that you did. It was like two minutes long. And I, I cut out selected parts and then we wrote a, a script and had you read that that yeah. day. And then we, we put the other commercial with. So it was really just taking, just selected. I cut what you did down to 15 and 30 seconds. Yep. You're welcome. Hashtag you're welcome. So, yeah, um, this is the podcast before the podcast. We love doing these intros because it's like a, a great place for us to just really get one last word in. But um, essentially, this podcast, we have a great talk about um, Donnie's gambling problem. Yep. We talk about... Uh, <laughs> Someone wrote an article on me about... Oh, yeah, when the Netflix show came yes, out. and mentioned how uh, the Western lifestyle really... Brought me out of the gutter. Just Ru- and <laughs> oh, I thought I was going to say ruined him. No, no. It saved me he from was, this gambling addiction that Bron I had. Cried he was, was his <laughs> alternative. He was such a... That was his new high. He was high. such a good kid out of good trajectory. And then he had to Thanks. start riding those dang bulls. Thankful <laughs> for Dale Brisby. Yeah. Dale Brisby and Rodeo saved this man from his gambling addiction. <laughs> there were a lot of interesting articles about the Netflix show. So, how to be a cowboy. I you know what the funniest thing... all of them. <laughs> and they were all... Pretty happy with me. <laughs> yeah, with dude. Me. <laughs> I know there might have. There's probably some bad reviews out there, but I I didn't see them. Yeah, me neither. Somebody no, did dude. a good job of keeping them from me. Yeah, same. So I mean, go check out how to be a you know what, on though, Netflix if you haven't. It's something people don't realize, and and we did. You know, when we were all watching it in here when we had the the debut that day. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I turned to one of you, and I'm like, you know, with the way they edit it, I'm like, we have way more fun than it shows. You know, with each other. Right, yeah. hanging out. Yeah, then then you can. They, which they showed a lot. Of they that. showed a lot of it, but, but like, like no, but we have a lot more fun than that. Yeah, you have no idea <laughs> <laughs> how this much fun we have. This is the tip of the ice. <laughs> Better baby. listen to the rest of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> we talk about. Um, yeah, we talk about um, the beef industry. We talk about the NFR, what it was like to be there, and the food. 
We talked about uh, Donnie's gambling problem. Emergency bathroom breaks in rural New Mexico. I shouldn't have drank 32 ounces of... Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. No, that one wasn't you. <laughs> yeah, that was an interesting story that we get but to. We got, we've got the video. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to be notified of when these podcasts come out, please text the word podcast to 940-353-0890. And yes, that is me texting you. Um, so... Thank you for that. Thank you for Total Feeds and our other sponsors. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> our other sponsors, Rock and Roll Denim, American Hats, and Can-Am Off-Road. So, powered by Total Feeds. Now, on to the podcast. You bet. Oh, yeah. No, turn the music down. Turn the music. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Leather work. Leroy, we talked about leather leather work. All right, wait, you can turn wait, 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 start the whole thing over. No, yep, just <laughs> roll the intro music. No, the whole intro. <laughs> Corey thinks he's a comedian today. Yeah. It's my job. <laughs> Hardly. Not very good at it. We're in Winnebago. Corey Anderson, Leroy Gibbons, Donnie Ray, Daytona, myself. You bet. So I got, yeah, I got sick. I lost my voice. Literally on day six, I lost my voice. Laryngitis. Like, if there's one thing you have to have at a trade show, it's your voice. Right. Gotta, gotta stay s- out of them karaoke bars. I gotta, <laughs> gotta say hi to people. <laughs> yeah. I got I got really wasted and karaoke like for six hours straight. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I was pretty sick. Thank, thank God they didn't record it. I know, but you were sick when we got there. Yeah. I tested, though, when I got there and when I got back, and both times the test was negative. So I think it was strep. No, I tested like four times, So, and I, I tested <coughs> negative, so I think you gave me strep. Oh, did I? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, um, this is your fault. After you nearly got my social media team arrested, For not having lights or tags on your trailer. Okay. Let's not act like they were prepared. She showed up without a hitch. How are you going to show up to pull a trailer without a hitch? What do you want me to say? I'm just, I'm not, which I'm not throwing rocks at. We we could provide that I feel like you should provide hitches to people who pull your trailer. (laughs) Which I don't mind doing, (laughs) but I'm just saying like, we're all human. Okay. I made her, she had bald tires. I'm like, well, you got it. You're going to drive somebody's trailer. you got to at least be ready with tires. I am a long-haired hippie YouTuber. You really expect my <laughs> registration to be current on my trailer that I use twice a it, year? It was four years expired, if okay. I remember. Okay, in my defense, I bought it from my granddad, and then he died. And I don't know what to do. <laughs> they have gotten really strict that's, at yeah. the courthouse. I was like, that's not the end of the story. Is it? Cause that doesn't, because that's usually, amazing. used to, I got a couple trailers. You can go up there and you can call them shop-made trailer if they're under a certain weight. And they're mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, here's some tags. And I was and, and I remember doing that once, and it was a shop-made trailer that I bought, but I remember doing that once, and I thought, that was way too easy. And now you can't just do that you got to yeah. like take it to an inspector they inspect it like not inspector. just this is outrageous. and i'm not talking about getting like like just make sure that the the lights work but like anyway yeah trailer there's a leak in the roof we can't do this <laughs> yeah but anyways whatever i'm not throwing rocks i don't mind providing a hitch but i'm just saying like i'm not i'm not the I'm only sure. one that occasionally makes a mistake yeah to air so human. full disclosure <clears throat> I got my trailer tag a week before we left, and mine was three years. Thank out of you. Day. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm talking about. We're all humans, and I and, I don't have I don't have a dead grandparent in that story. <laughs> and well, the problem is she didn't get pulled over because the registration was out. No, it was the lights. The lights were out, <laughs> and that's my bad. <laughs> I can't blame that one on my granddad <laughs> because they can't see that little sticker at night. They ain't looking for it. But when you're pulling a big box at night with no lights on it, that's when they're like, hey. Yeah, so. But in Vegas. You, we made it all the way to Vegas. Yeah, it literally. 17-hour drive, and then then we get pulled over. Literally a big box because you don't have, you didn't have fenders on it either. 
Well, they rub. Yeah, that makes it wider. Because we over, we put too much. <laughs> There's probably lights on there. We put too much to weight be. in it, and so it pushes the trailer down because the axles aren't like heavy duty. And so the fenders then hit the tires, which rubs the tread off, and then you have a blowout. So instead of getting like the proper axles under it like we need to, we just took the fenders off. It's, it's modified. <laughs> modified. Custom. After, after market. We, so got too, we got too much weight. <laughs> Let's take 30 pounds off by taking these fenders off. <laughs> yeah. That even it out. But, um, yeah, you have a very different operation. Well, the way you travel. Because I, I don't stop. I stop for gas, and, and that's when I allow my bathroom break, you know, every 300 miles. And then I, I just move down the road. But I understand you guys will stop. There's special bathroom breaks on your journey. Well, also again, in my defense, we had like 12 people. Getting everybody's bathroom <laughs> schedule lined up with a dozen people going down the road is pretty difficult. Yeah, you had an emergency situation on the way out. Yeah, that was pretty comical. <laughs> Kevin was like, I got to go. It's now. Kevin never <laughs> talks, so when he said it, I knew he meant it. Why did y'all film it, though? Because <laughs> it was hilarious. Just If we weren't there to film it, that would have been a pretty peaceful experience, I feel like, for him. Yeah, out on the prairie. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, that's you pretty know. close to I-40. <laughs> well, like, if the interstate wasn't there. Like, oh, yeah, no, it is. Yeah, yeah I've, I've <laughs> and moved if it out wasn't in the open. 30 like, degrees. The problem it. is, much like where um, I Recently, I had to go. I love how we just called Kevin out for pooping on the side of the <laughs> Oh, it's on, it's on a Winnebago. Yeah, weekly. I mean, there ain't no hiding. Yeah. It. There was like seven people filming it, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's in New Mexico. No trees. Oh, yeah. Except one. Let's paint a picture of how barren that, that pit stop was. <laughs> oh, man. There were no trees. Like, the not a chance. was coming up. One which he used it was to beautiful. like, it's like he yuck, held on to the tree. He faced the tree, grabbed the tree with two hands, a branch. Smart move. Yeah, I liked it. Because when you lean up against it, you know, that bark will tear, on a mesquite tree, bark kind of tear you up. And then, yeah, just, I mean, he was probably 100 yards away. Maybe. Yeah, we could see it. As as far as he thought he could make it. We, I mean, it was projectile. <laughs> I hate to go there, but like. I'm glad I stopped. It would have really done a number on my seats in my truck. <laughs> Too many cups of coffee, man. I got to go. Well, we got up that morning yeah. and just left. We almost left Donnie there. Yeah. <laughs> you guys left at like 2 in the afternoon. No. He was still asleep? It was oh, what? It was 6.30 oh, in the morning. Oh, this is the second We day went to Amarillo. Amarillo. <clears throat> well, if they're going to call Kevin out, I'm pooping on the side of the highway. It's okay. No worries, yeah. Slept in. Hey, man, I, kn- I realized I was like, <laughs> you I, I, it took me about Amarillo. 30 seconds to get out the door, and that's no lie. Like, Yeah. Like, I freaking didn't mess around at all. Some guys, they wake up late and they're like, oh, I'm coming. Yeah, the sugar <laughs> did jump out of it. <laughs> well, yeah. you, <laughs> you were motivated God, because you know... Right. I've left people. Yeah. <laughs> and we were at my Nana's house in Amarillo. Right. On our way to Vegas. The last thing he wanted to do is wake up, and the only person there is my Nana <laughs> on the couch watching TV, and the rest of the crew is halfway to Vegas. <laughs> well, it's Sunday. You want to watch football? No, oh, man. <laughs> Dale? Got some, got some cereal <laughs> you're in not, there. You're not. Dale, you're, you're redheaded. Oh, your grandma, your your nana knows me. Don't worry. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm not gonna read into that. Why would I read yeah, into don't. that? Statement? Yeah, don't, don't, don't. Um, <laughs> she is a widow. This Joker did a 360 in the bed, 360, <laughs> and was ready to go. It's almost like in the 360 is when his clothes came on. That's how quick he got out the door. I left Wes once. We were supposed to go to the – I was doing a commercial for the American at the uh, AT&T Stadium, and uh, it was with Rowdy, the mascot for the Dallas Cowboys. Right. And uh, um, our mutual friend there set it up to help promote the American. And two hours there, two hours back, that's four hours. That's a lot of work I can do when 90% of my job is on my phone. So I like – I mean, like, hey, I got this guy. Like, hey, drive me there. And you'll also get to meet Rowdy, and we'll visit, and I'll work on my phone while I'm going. And he was like, okay, yeah, man. What'd you say, Donnie? I don't know. I'm like a diesel engine, man. Oh, Uh, yeah. This is West. I'm hard to get started. (laughs) I'm even harder. (laughs) 
Well, it's, well it's, I'm like a diesel engine. I'm hard to get going and even harder to stop. And even harder to stop. <laughs> yeah. It's not an actual quote from Wes, but we just anticipate it was something that he would have said eventually. So if you're, yeah, if you're new to, but it was rodeo time. People that are new to road time need to go back and look at your videos with Wes to know who we're talking about. Well, th- like, this is a pretty funny video, like of so oh, it's on it's on YouTube. The but whole, you, this this whole story is on YouTube. Yeah, so they need to go see this because Wes is like a walking cartoon character, in my opinion. <laughs> He's on a roll today. Yeah. He called you a dork. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he called Wes a walking cartoon. Well, but character. an entertaining one, like adult, like an Adult Swim. I, it's character. almost. How yeah, do you it, mean? Yeah, please it, expand. It, in in Wes's defense, it's almost like hanging out with Wiley Coyote. Okay. Well, <laughs> he's just you know he talks a little bit more though. Stuff <laughs> stuff's just gonna happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That. For instance, this. Yeah. So it's like. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're leaving at six. Yeah. I hate being late. Hate it. Yep. So yep. much. Me too. Yep. Hate it. Oh, I get the other day I was like I'll break out in hives. <laughs> I told all the interns, I was like, Hey, we're going to walk Molly Camp to wean my calves yeah. the day before the sale. So if we're late, it don't matter. I was like, We're leaving between seven forty five and eight. Truck has started, we're rolling out of the gate seven forty four. Like there's no eight yeah. o'clock involved. Like we're gone. Like yeah. I just I hate being late. Anyways, I was You're like preaching the choir. I was like six o'clock. I think it was six. Yeah, it was six. I was like six o'clock. We're leaving, and uh, trucks running. I'm in front. I also don't like waking people up. Like I don't. I don't know. Like even just in the house. Like I'm pretty. Yeah. Like if I know people are asleep, my ass is tippy toeing. Right. Like I do not. I, it just. I don't know. Well, I don't and know. Yeah, a, are you? How early? How early to get up? Because I've always been like the first one up. I don't know why, but I'm always <coughs> the first one. Even when I was a little kid, and so I got used to being quiet in the morning. Uh, last two mornings I got up at four, but yeah, I do. most of the time it's most it's it's damn sure before six usually. Yeah. So you didn't want to wake Wes up. Uh, I feel like you had. I mean, no, I feel like you had to bake that into the cake when you traveled with him. I and just, and really, I just I wasn't because it wasn't a sit. Donnie's deal was different. I'm gonna wake Donnie up. I mean, I mean, that'd be a pretty old move for me <laughs> yeah, to not wake Donnie up. But he's he's one of those people that can, you know, he can right? Go, he can well, go from zero to. 60. But in this situation, like it was like it wasn't pivotal that he go. It wasn't like mandatory. You know what I mean? Like it was just yeah. like it was handy, and like I thought he was gonna be ready, and so it was like six on the dot, and I'm in the truck, and I was like, man, I'm I'm just I'm going. He should have been up, and so at seven. Well, and it's a cool opportunity. You think that he'd be up and ready to go. Thank you. You'd go tour Cowboy Stadium Thank yeah. you. with the mascot. I'm, yeah, we, I'm handing you a gift. Yeah. So yeah. It, he calls me at 7. An hour later, I'm, at, <laughs> yeah, I'm in Weatherford. Man, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I was like, it's okay. It's not a big deal. I mean, I'm definitely going to talk about it and yeah. give you a hard time. But you're outside the, yeah, of that, like. You're the one that missed out. I'm not docking your pay. You right. know what I mean? Like, I, But uh, I'm going to give you a hard time about it indefinitely. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, but we told him. So I did that, like. We did like three little short clips with me and Rowdy, and a <laughs> yeah. super cool dude. Right. Um, even though he never talks, he just like is always smiling and throws his hands up. Right. <laughs> it's kind of like a mime, but super cool mime. It's like it's a mask or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he's just stuck in a good mood. <laughs> he's but, a uh, cool mime. But I didn't I've never tell heard Wes that phrase. That. Like a cool mime. I told Wes. It's like a cool mime. Um, man, I did one with Dak Prescott. Did one with Emmett Smith. And one with Troy Eggman. So it was a pretty good morning. Mm. And this joker sunk his head in shame. Yeah, I really <laughs> thought he was going to cry a little bit. Oh, man, the poor guy. Oh, are you kidding? You're going to be messing with He's me, He's like, right? they didn't say that. And I was like, well, they didn't want to tell me that, so I didn't bring, like, a posse. You know, mm-hmm. they didn't want to advertise Troy Eggman's going to be there. Yeah. And so, anyways, we put it all in the rodeo time. And it took him like a month to watch the rodeo time. <laughs> so then it, and we didn't tell him till he watched it. But, um, yeah. Anyways, he'd been thinking about it for a month straight. Man, the opportunities I've missed. I ain't, I'm, I ain't waking up late again. <laughs> I hate yes. that feeling when you wake up late. Yeah, I feel, hate you it. Feel pretty bad. I hate it. Like if, especially like right before you look at the clock, and you're like. I feel too rested. This yeah. is not good. You yeah. know, like you get that feeling yeah. like. I, the few times that this happened to me, because I, I haven't even used an alarm clock <clears throat> since I was 
Ooh, you know. look at me, <laughs> Mr. Tough Guy. My no, body knows. I the tell time. my body when to wake up. <laughs> I, I, I literally will freak out that much because I used to get up and, and train in the morning when, in, when I was a kid. I was an athlete. And so I just got not used anymore to that. though. <laughs> <laughs> those those days are over, man. No, in fact, I'm going to get an MRI. And I've had this shoulder surgery done for a labrum twice on the shoulder, and now they think I tore my pectoral muscle. Like yeah. really? What else uh, is there in there? Junior is there anything else team. I can tear? <laughs> junior well, tennis team's rough. Yeah, but. But Get I will if I wake up late. If I'm late like that, tennis is a sport too, Leroy. I know I've played not, tennis, not in this warehouse. Yeah, no. yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I I will wake up with so much adrenaline, I could sell it. I could have yeah, that bottle it up. Oh my god, uh, I can't. Yeah, I do. Is that how you get? You just like your heart starts to race, and you're like, no. Oh my god, no. It it takes me a minute to wake up. Like when I got like, I'll I set mean, two after alarms. you realize you're late. Oh yeah, of course. Any that's anybody. I think if you care about what you're missing yeah, out. Yeah, what on. what did you go through? He you, he he went through that. Like, like yeah, you, yeah. You I'm telling you, like <laughs> under the sheets, the cortisol and adrenaline. Just like, picture someone laying, <laughs> laying in bed under the sheets, three sixty. <laughs> like he spun. Like the sheets didn't move. He spun so fast. <laughs> Like he was like, hey, where am I? I know I'm late, but I don't know where I am, and I yeah. don't know what I'm late for. No, because your brain's, your body's working. Your brain's not there yeah. yet, right? Well, his yeah. brain was there, but like it your was body's like, out the door, and then your head starts. To something wake like up. that. There was some sort of disconnect that just made his body go like spin move. <laughs> I never should. If you if you follow me on Snapchat, you saw it, but. Um, no, if it's like a regular morning, I think that was your body shaking your brain awake. Yeah. <laughs> if it's like a regular morning, I'm like, it's Wes, like, like, like my ass is in charge for the next three minutes. I'm hard to get, hard to get started. I'm even harder to stop, <laughs> but I got to so I'll set two alarms and then I, uh, I got a little caffeine drink next to my bed that I'll mix like right there and I'll go ahead and. I know some people say it's not good to get on your phone right away, but like, like if I if I need to be out of bed by five thirty, like I'll, I'll wake up at five. I'll take a drink of some caffeine and then like I'll check emails, read my Bible app. I'll sit there for thirty minutes, like, but I'll account for that ahead of time. And but it takes me a little bit to get going. No, I. And cold shower. Like, I need it all, man. I've always gotten up like, early, and I'll get like you. I'll get up sometimes 4 or 5 in the morning, but I tell people, like, just because you see me in the morning does not make me a morning person. Yeah. <laughs> 10 I, or 11 before I start being a nice guy. See, That's I don't... the way I walked in here. It's <laughs> noon. <laughs> I'm still I, a jerk. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm not... I don't know that I would technically be a morning person. I like to have gotten some stuff done. By ten o'clock, You're not it makes you person. feel better. Yep, you you you'd enjoy waking up early, but you don't enjoy other people early in the morning. I, oh, that's I'm not a morning person. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but well, but I mean, you, you like might get now. I haven't yeah. lived with you. In yeah, yeah. You don't years, want to get up at, at ten or eleven. And be you like, feel oh, a lot man. better if you get up and get your hard stuff done yeah. before the day starts. And really. it's crazy how 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 well we can operate on very little sleep. Oh God, yeah. People just. For some reason, people think they got to have like nineteen damn hours of sleep. I can't. Do that. I don't understand it. Like, yeah, like my thing is I can. Like, I can three hours, I'll be good. Six hours, it's gonna be a good day. But then I can sleep for twelve hours if I let myself. Right. I cannot. I'm I'm kind of jealous. It will. <laughs> there are times if I get the twelve hours, my like the next two days are. Uh, oh really? Yeah. I don't feel it's, as good. When I get more sleep, like yeah, after you cross that really line, sluggish. yeah, it's crazy. Like somebody said one time, like I don't remember who said it, but they were like, you're, "Oh, a preacher." Yeah, I think it was Matt Chandler. He was talking about. Uh, you ever notice you get back from a vacation and you're exhausted? You got to rest from your rest. Mm. You know, it's like you go on vacation, you sleep right. in every day, and then you get back, and that first day of work, you're just like, "Oh, I can't sleep in at all." Yeah, I mean, I seriously seven o'clock, and it's unheard of for me. Like last year's Snowmageddon, where there's like three days that nobody did anything, but we all stayed in the house. That was. Did you all lose exhausting. power up here? I didn't. He did intermittently. I yeah. Did. See, I was. Did you, Donnie? Mm -mm. Y'all never did. Good. Your your house would have got cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
We only have space here. But yeah, so like <laughs> Leroy and I, Leroy and I live across the street from each other. And yep. My house <laughs> didn't lose power, and his did, which is weird because technically they said that it was my house is in town, which it's not. It's on the line. Mm. But I guess they moved me into the rest of the houses in town where they'd be on for two hours and they'd cut it off for maybe like that two hours. Maybe yeah, we had rolling blackouts. Yeah, in Weatherford. Uh, yeah, I bet my uh, yep. The uh, what you call it on the power pole is in in town. That's in town or close, in, you know, like on the it road. It's right on the line. If it's on yeah. the road, then. But uh, yeah, man, I was terrified to start my um, fireplace. I I called a fire uh, place because you guy. hadn't you hadn't used it or what? Yeah. No, we used it a couple years. Oh, really? But I I, but I knew that. So that it's got this thing on the front. It, it's like this deal and it's got a fan in it where it'll kind of help right. push all that heat out but that deal doesn't work but it's still got this huge contraption it's not just like a normal fireplace you can just go in and look up and see the top right and so this this sw- chimney sweep guy came by and he was like yeah i'm gonna have to get extra help to come get this off and it made me think you mean it's, as oh. difficult as it would be to get this cap thing off like i bet the people before me did not have this done off so it's full of creosote i bet it's full of everything yeah. And I bet any fire would put the whole house down shortly. You know, like it's just. Well, that's comforting when it's, it was so, literally so, zero degrees. Exactly. Online, yeah. Sure you paid your insurance. Ne- was it negative six? <laughs> I think it was negative six. Oh, up here. here. It was I think it got lower. negative six. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, negative six, like you, I wanted to so bad. Cause I especially got firewood. I got firewood on my back porch. Like, anyways, whatever. I need to get that done. So. Yeah, it's oh, you still here. haven't? Well, no, he came the other day, like I said. I made it through Snowmageddon. That was too late to get it done then. January. I was going to say you had you had it was him come in out February. Like then? No, he came out like a, like a week you. ago. So you're saying it won't get cold before February? I'm, I'm going to have it done. <laughs> He's it's coming right. back. Look, I'm the guy with four-year-old so, registration on my trailer. So there was right? like, you know, March, April... Uh, what's that other? What month? is it? May, June. There was July in there. Yeah, were there August? any? I think we had an August this year. Yeah. Were there any upsets at the NFR that caught your eye? <laughs> <laughs> there's some things that I procrastinate, and then there's other things that I do not procrastinate. And so, I guess getting a chimney sweep is the the one thing. I'm, now, if well, I was the first time you've had a chimney, you could hold it against me if I were using that chimney every day. And then I were still procrastinating it. But I am smart enough. To, all right, if I'm going to procrastinate getting a chimney sweep, then I'm not going to use the chimney. My dad, like, bought one of those whole house generators and, and put a, an extra 250-gallon propane tank in the backyard. <laughs> like he's, <laughs> he's ready this time. I don't know if he's... I'm, I I'm, tell him, well, that storm <laughs> happened last year. I got the contract <laughs> ready to sign on solar. Hey, you know... Uh, you ought to talk to Ben about that. He's got his whole place lit up with solar. Really? Is he like That's like seventy thousand dollars worth of solar. Uh, I don't have that much solar. <laughs> it is. It. it is like I have hit pause just because. Like at first they sent me this contract and it was like X amount, and I was like, "Oh, that's not bad." And then like, yeah, by year seven, it's free. Mm-hmm. You know, it pays for itself, yep. and then you you know you might have a ten dollar, eight dollar bill, mm-hmm. and uh. Anyway, so then they sent the official contract, and it was like ten thousand or something more. Whoa. And I was like, Whoa, "Hey guys, that's a different number." Yeah. And apparently, in the fine print, it was like the original number was with the tax savings because you'll get a tax credit because you're going green or whatever. I was gonna say the oh, original shit. number was with with it sitting in your backyard. Yeah. The no, new the- number is with it. On your roof. <laughs> <laughs> no, the original number was like wires. with the a money you would save on taxes. I was like, how how y'all know I'm not? How y'all even know I'm gonna have to pay taxes? Like, right. I might be losing my butt anyway. So I've hit pause because that's a big number. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, enough about solar. Rodeo. Let's get back to rodeo. Let's get back to rodeo. So we'll, we'll 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 put the prepping on pause for now. Where um, should we start this year? Bareback riding, that's the first event. Oh, we're going to go Did you listen to our uh, Tilden and Casey Fields podcast? Oh, my God, no. By this time, I I think it was podcast 86. So this is maybe 89 that we're doing right now. Holy cow. 
If y'all are listening to this and you haven't listened to 86, you should go back. It's pretty entertaining. What are y'all going to do for 100? You got to do something special, right? <clears throat> Who do we have for 100? I don't know, but I want to bring on Don L. Brown from RA Ranch. Yep. We went out there the other day. I took him on their quarterly field trip, kind of like when we went to Craig's. Mm-hmm. That was the last quarter. Mm-hmm. This quarter was um, the RA Brown Ranch. Really, really informative. And uh, Donnell has done an outstanding job, like, teaching them. With what little time he had, he taught them about seed stock operations, like, to a T. You and your dad probably would have really enjoyed it. They have, uh, you know, a little mini feedlot there for their bulls because during the bull sale, they'll sell 800 to 1,000 uh, bulls. And so oh, they've, they've got to feed them all out. That was our whole... Life, our whole life I was feeding right. cattle when I was growing up. That's what kind of inspired, I mean, gave your your dad the background to set up to start the feed. Yeah, well, because he made rations uh, for for the yeah. forever, and, and I'm sure it's like it's like a dang, uh, it's like he could do it in his sleep, put together a ration. Oh, absolutely, right. I mean, he did it every day. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. He was grinding it out every day. He had uh, there's one operation. I mean, that I remember going out there with him. It was a hundred and Hundred and ten thousand head of cattle. That's yeah, big, I mean it's a big old feedlot. Well, it looks like a. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a. Is city. that all? <laughs> <laughs> looks like a city made. Of what cattle. about the second pen? Yeah, how much was? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, then, uh, yeah, yeah. No, so that's that's all. Our whole life revolved around feeder cattle. Um. You should yeah, start a feed company. Ah, <laughs> there's Dang. so many people that don't like, tell anybody that that's a like, great idea want to do something <laughs> but they don't have i mean like he's a natural like that's a natural progression into a, a great feed company you know because that's the number one thing is your product effective mm-hmm. you know whereas like some people they they get an idea and they want to do a thing but they don't know how to do the thing, you know, like oh. they, they want to start a feed company, but they I don't get, know anything about rations. Why should I buy feed from you? Well, yeah. Listen I've to Dr. Harry Anderson talk for millions feedings. of cattle. So yeah. Kind of knows what he's talking about. I had this situation. This was the NFR like two or three years ago. And, um, uh, a friend of mine, he and his wife own, uh, rodeo rigs, you know, the, the yep. trailers. Yep. They're right by your booth. Yep. They're from Montana. And, uh, Anyway, I, I took him some total people. And did you bring me some, by the way? Yeah, I've got it in the truck. Okay, good. I did not forget. And uh, I gave him some total people, and uh, he comes walking over my booth with this young lady who I don't recognize. And he's got this look on his face, and I'm like, I know this look. I've done trade shows for him. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is somebody. She's going to challenge you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm ready for this. So it, I guess it, it's a gal that works for him, and she's scoured the internet and, you know. And um, she's asked me a couple of questions. I'm like, well, my dad's right here. He's, it's his formula. And my dad was turning around, and I stopped her. She's like taking a breath, you know. And I said, before you ask your question, <laughs> I just want you to think about the fact that my dad has a Ph.D. in nutrition. Right. And he's been making formulas for 50 years. Yeah. Versus whatever information you have. And she went, and walked away. <laughs> that was the end of it. <laughs> yeah. Like, they don't think about that. No, yeah. he, it's really, you know, he really went to school and he really did it his whole life. Well, it's all headlines. Her brother that works at GNC. <laughs> no, I don't, no, nope, I'm not listening to you oh. anymore. There's I'm, a lot of headline readers. I'm pretty sure she just uh, called her friend Google. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Facebook. Like sharing I on Facebook. Facebook. Said. Like, for instance, growth hormones that have been completely sure. safe for cattle for. Huh? decades it's been proven that safe for humans to consume after cattle have used them you know like, but it just sounds better so on I, a headline I, yeah and i remember this and so people in uh this was back when i was in college it was back in the early 90s and this what <laughs> <laughs> yeah before this is before the internet and she i was working at this pizza place and she was you know one of these super liberal you know vegan Back in the day, 
When it wasn't as cool. When it wasn't as cool. It wasn't, and there was no Facebook, you know, group to join. So and it's she, not cool now, but imagine how uncool it was 20 then. years ago. She made some comment about men are aggressive. No offense to our vegan family. Exactly. Men are aggressive because, <clears throat> this was her theory, they put, they put hormones in uh, cattle and then men eat the cattle and they become more <laughs> full of testosterone <laughs> i didn't even know i was laughing so hard you know because yeah. of my dad i'm like right and i grew up with that i'm like well what if know. we what if we ate the heifers yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it doesn't does doesn't it balance like out whenever like they they start out as a female yeah. calf it doesn't you know? work like that ever. i don't know how dare you assume cow's gender right <laughs> 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 yeah, and the idea, you know, the idea that there's something left over in the meat, and then you eat it, and it goes through your stomach, and then right pumps you. Up. It's like Popeye, you know, eating a can of spinach yeah. or something like that. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> no, Seriously, they do have withdrawal like periods, you know. So like we weaned sixty days ago, you know, we'll vaccinate and brand, and a couple calves got sick, doctor them, and well, they've been weaned for sixty days, and then now they're going to go to wheat for a little bit. For uh, you know another 120 days, and then they'll go to the feedlot for you know however much more time, and uh, that's a long time. You know that that stuff's gonna be out of their system. Oh my <laughs> you know? god! Yeah. Most most of those most of these medicines have a 30 day withdrawal period. Yeah. So the we we weaned another set of calves the day before we sold them. I'm not gonna run them through the chute. You know, I, they were small enough. I know they're not going to go, you know, they were like 500, 450 pound calves. So like they're not going to go be a steak in a week. Right. So I could have still maybe vaccinated them and help, helped out the next guy. But yep. just in case, whatever, I'm not going to vaccinate them the day before they're leaving. You know, also it was kind of a waste of medicine and money for me personally. But, uh, but the point is, is like, yeah. you know, a lot of, you know, people and especially, uh, you know these feedlots they're very savvy they're gonna they're gonna mind the 30-day withdrawal period yep. or whatever they're giving them it might be 45 or whatever it is but well people don't understand medicine at all because the you know everything you take let's say you take uh, an aspirin right. so uh it it goes into your liver and your liver just chops it up so it's it's called a half-life in in medicine and uh, each medicine has a certain period of half-life where literally half of it is gone because of the way you metabolize it. Mm -hmm. So you take that aspirin. The most I'm saying mm -hmm, like I'm listening. Like I'm not saying mm -hmm, like I knew this because <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> so like you take that aspirin, they say you can take another one in four hours because it's gone. It's gone. And half of it's gone in an hour. That does make sense. Yeah. I mean, why are you taking it four hours later? Right. Because it ain't in your system no more helping <laughs> it's you. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally broken down from, from this long molecule that's an aspirin and it's chopped up into into bits and you know it's in the toilet that's so <laughs> yeah that's why we eat beef yeah it doesn't it's it, much for you imagine what would happen if, if your liver shut down and stuff accumulated you just die right and that's true of animals too what do you guys what's your favorite cut of meat ribeye yeah Oh. Bone in ribeye is pretty, yeah, pretty good. All right, it's hard to argue with a good ribeye. Yeah, I'm, 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 a, I'm a ribeye man myself. <clears throat> I like tenderloin every now and then. I guess I didn't eat a whole lot of ribeyes. I, I think I might have eat, eaten a lot of sirloins in my younger life, and it took me until like 24, 25 to really appreciate a good ribeye. Yeah, so right, I think we might have both maybe experience the same humble beginnings because like, yeah, at the house on a Tuesday when we're in fifth, sixth, seventh grade kind of deal, so like nice. we ain't having ribeyes. No. You know what I mean? Like, no. Pop's a teacher, an ag teacher, like we ain't I know, having no dang ribeyes. I know every possible way you can make hamburger. <laughs> right. Because that's, we had it coming out of our ears. Yeah. Might have been even thrown in the oven, yeah. you know, like, or it's the yeah. second night and it's the microwave, which yeah. steak, the second, steak sucks. It's worse than French fries Yeah, on yeah. night number two. Like, <laughs> chop it up and put it in a taco because... <laughs> yeah. you get you man. <laughs> I guess so or something. But, like, beef the third day is, like, there's nothing worse. Like, 
But anyway, whatever. Uh, yeah, humble. It, but but yeah, whenever I, I think that might have been what got me in trouble with the doctor because like there was a year stretch where I was like, I'm gonna have me a damn ribeye every day. You know what I mean? It's so <laughs> like, good. <laughs> they, morning, like, noon, and night. Not every day. Well, I'll tell you what did it. We went to JB's. Um, to North Carolina, Randy and I did. Yeah. And um, Samantha, just top five ribeyes I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Like she she seared it on the uh, oven top thing in a pan and then put it in the oven, and I can't remember all the – and so for like six months after that, it was me trying to replicate what Samantha <laughs> had done. Mm -hmm. And maybe one time I got close, but other times it was just like – but still, a mediocre ribeye is way better than a – than a really good sirloin, in my opinion. Yeah. That filet we had at uh, Friendsgiving was pretty all right. Oh. Oh, yeah. That was good. Yeah. Holy cow. And I like it red. That was red. <laughs> that was, that was, was pretty red. I <laughs> like it Texas red. That was pretty pretty on the money. Christmas, yeah. Chet made a really good tenderloin. That was... We had some good eats at um, awesome. NFR. I had a pretty good so, stack. Is that what it's called? I might have had a couple good ribeyes, actually. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, your dad bought us some. Yeah. Those were really good. I missed out so bad because I didn't even get a slice of prime rib in <laughs> Vegas <laughs> in three weeks because I got sick. Yeah. And I, you know, I spent the last week in a hotel room. And so the night before I left, I'm like, I grabbed my girlfriend. I'm like, I got to go out. Yeah, I got to go yeah. out for a steak. Something. We went over to the parks. You know where that is next to New York, New York? They have a steakhouse in there, and I had a 16-ounce bone-in tenderloin, which I've never even heard of. A bone-in tenderloin. Mm. And I said, as red as you can make it. And yeah. I, I seriously, like, was gnawing on the bone. I, I like I it was like so a, delicious. I like a medium rare. Don't medium get me rare. wrong. Yep. But, like, sometimes those tenderloins, if they're too big, like, in the very middle, like, I mean, like, we can heat it up a little more in room temperature. You know, that's no, where I'm at. And, and medium rare is, is that's where they recommend, you know, the best flavor and everything. But I, for whatever reason, I grew up, it's grew like up butter. Really raw meat. Yeah. It just kind of melts in your mouth, <laughs> yeah. you know. I'll eat one if it's bloody. I would way rather have one more bloody than overdone. 100%. I seriously wish we had eaten lunch before we sat down for this podcast. I don't because I can like taste it. Right so, yeah, you get to worrying about like the beef industry and like um you know hoping that the government government doesn't outlaw eating a steak whatever, I'm being dramatic. And then you have a steak. Oh, I'll move. And you're just like, "Oh, there's no way. There's no way a sane eating." I lo I love this country. We're talking about steak. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um did you did you go to the, did, did you go to a performance i didn't no we went last year yeah and the year before yeah went last year and go this year i didn't either i went the first night and of course <laughs> that was my one time I, at rest right? i don't watch rest. a minute of it i'm i'm out in the hallway that was typically when we went to dinner yeah first night. Yeah. This was when the perf was going on. We Donnie watched. found himself having dinner with me. It just kind of worked out, and I don't want to eat alone. And <laughs> Donnie was with me all day. Where'd you go? So we would go where, well, you know, at the Mirage, like I would just kind of bounce around. Eating there. Oh, man. There's a Everything couple good places. Good. Yeah. You know, and all the buffets were shut down. Yeah. That oh, sucks. my God. I am such a buffet person. Yeah. Especially in Vegas. The Mirage I like big one. They got a good, they got a good buffet. It's really good at, at was breakfast. Was it open? I don't even know, but it like, wouldn't. no, they, yeah, they should. Oh dude, my God. they got this breakfast me. place right there by the elevators. Yeah, that one's uh, pretty good. All right, that's pretty good. All right, man. And what are you open all night? It's called the 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 pantry. No. Yeah, the pantry is not open all night. It no, says it one, is the one right by the elevator. It says it's twenty four hours, but it ain't. Oh well, their hours are maybe different now than what they used to be, mm -hmm. maybe. But um, uh, and then the stack. And then that Italian food place. There's a sushi place. Anyways, there's this enough place, about the Mirage. There's great this place food. I for breakfast. I have to go every time I'm in Reno or Las Vegas. It's called Pegs, glorified ham and eggs. You mm. have to go. And I, I, I kid you not. It, and they they make the best huevos rancheros I've had anywhere on the planet. I think the bre the best breakfast food I've had. I mean, pantry is goes head to head with it. But Hash House a go go. The one it's in the link yeah, on I've the heard strip. Of that. I There's one that. off the strip. It doesn't seem as good as the one in the link, 
But if you ain't go, if you don't get there early, you're going to sit there for an hour waiting to get a table. But no if you kidding. do, it's worth it, and they're going to serve you pretty fast. But, man, they had some pancakes in there. Ooh, really? Yeah. I, that's that may be like the best thing about Vegas. For you know, me it's hard. It's hard to make game changing pancakes too. Yeah. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there are a lot up. of mediocre pancakes out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, but the thing is, I like even mediocre pancakes. Maybe <laughs> he's he's more it's a, a mediocre. Over, you ever if get it's over a mediocre old? pancake? He might as well have a waffle. He's you guys switch. get over Old South in Fort Worth ever? Uh huh. Uh-uh. It's been a while. Know. You've never been there? Mm-mm. Oh, man. I dated a girl who lived right there. Oh, man. She didn't know it was because I wanted to go to Old South. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dating you because of your proximity to yep. those buckwheat pancakes at Old South Pancake yep. House. Yeah, no, that place is, that's a popular spot, too. You better get there early, especially on a, I think they're open well, it's on open Sunday. 24 hours. Right. Day. But I'm saying you get there at 10 in the morning on a Sunday or a Saturday, like, whoo. Oh, like the. Tough. German pancakes? <clears throat> Have you ever had the German pancakes over there? You know what else you can do in Vegas? Gotta, let's take besides eat really let's take good food. Let's take all y'all over there. Is gamble. <laughs> How much did you get down, Donnie? Let's talk about it. Yeah, let's How hear. much did you get up at one point? <clears throat> Probably like 500. What's your game? Blackjack. I played okay. craps a little bit with Sterling, but not very much. <sighs> it's so too confusing sp- for me. I, it, I thought it was, but... Just sitting there, you figure it out pretty quick. It's not as complicated as people make it out to be. You just got to play it. Really, there's some things on that board Does I don't fully system? understand. I don't think Sterling has a system. <laughs> I think he just goes. <laughs> but I didn't really hang around long enough to find out. When we first came to Vegas, me, Jacobs, and Sterling, we played craps a lot. Yep. Um, we played blackjack too, but I just well, when you go to Vegas and then you play whatever game. And you win a little bit on it, all of a sudden that's yeah. your game. Oh you man, know? Like, I you know, always like, win at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I'm a roulette person, man. I like it. Well, that's because you won money there yeah. once, is what yeah. I. Man, I like them slot machines. That's because you won some there once, whatever. But like, so like I usually float around. I I don't sit at roulette much. I can't sit at a slot machine. Yeah, but, roulette confuses me too. Um, craps, you can you can win a lot. It's in a short amount too. of time. Like it, and if that's you get fun. Some energy over there, you can lose a lot. So did quick. you win at craps? You win it. You won it. I didn't win at all, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we spent most donation. of our time on the blackjack table. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. I'd say ninety nine percent. And and this is where that got gets get you in trouble if you go there for the NFR and you're there the whole time is like because you'll have two hours. Like, all right, I need to be over. At the, you know, well, we got two so, hours and we're in a casino, so I'm gonna go. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go sit in my room. No, <laughs> I'm going to that no, because right? the, the TV. I'm gonna sucks. go up, yeah. up my room. room and read the Bible mm-hmm. or craps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you find yourself sitting there. So that's why for me, if I break even, it's a win. Right in Vegas, because like I was able to have fun going up and down. What did did you did you gamble? Uh, a little bit. Dang. <laughs> I forgot. You did lose some money. I'll talk about it. <laughs> oh, you don't want to talk about I, it? I lost a little no, bit. No, but I... Yeah, I lost a little bit. I've watched you play poker. I would be hard-pressed to want to play against you. Poker or blackjack? No, when we filmed you guys out. At, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he would tell me... You, you told the story on that when we filmed that day about you, you were uh, playing for JB. Oh, yeah. And the Luxor, yes. Yeah. Tell me, tell him because we didn't. He talked a little bit about his, you know, his conversation with his wife. But well, I'm going to hear that story. How you took uh, over because you guys were on a roll. Well, he just every time he'd get up to go to the bathroom, he'd put money out there and be like, "Hey, play this." And I think he got up. It was like five digits. Yeah. Yeah. Got up a lot. I thought you said it was like fifteen thousand. Seventeen. So holy. <laughs> And then uh, he'd like walk off and put a thousand dollars out there and just play this for me. No, yeah, I'm not playing with a thousand dollars of your money. If you lose it, you lose it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. I lost a lot of it. <clears throat> See, I I oh. wouldn't want to play it because I'd be afraid to lose it. I'd be afraid I'm gonna win. And then I'm like, oh, this I could, this could be mine if it was my money out there. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd have to give it back to him. Yeah. You know, <laughs> do you know uh, R. J. Richard Jones? Um, Runs a sound at the PBRs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wonderful guy. Oh, yeah, great guy. Yeah. yeah. He won like 30000 or something one time in Vegas. Wow. You know, because they'll do the same thing. They'll be out there for, yeah. you know, during the PBR World Finals. And 
Right. Well, not anymore, but um, but yeah, I want to say he won like thirty, and yeah, he's he's kind of he's a mean blackjack player, and and uh, I think he went and immediately uh, wired like twenty of it back home, and then. <laughs> I heard. I don't know how true this is. So, if if his wife is listening, I don't, I'm sure she's heard the story too. This may not be true, but somebody told me. I'm not going to name any names. Matt West. That uh, he, uh, <laughs> he he won like thirty, and then next morning he calls his wife. He's like, "Hey, I won a bunch. How much? Twenty thousand. <laughs> I'm sending it back. <laughs> wired it, wired it, and kept it too." <laughs> Stayed out there. In he's Vegas. He, Richard, you know, he's a big fella and uh, kind of on the quiet side, you know, for a sound man, not like Hambone. Yeah. There's some similarities between them two. Yeah. He's funny. He used to rodeo, he used to ride bulls pretty good. RJ did. And yeah, not Hambone. So. That's not the similarity. No. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> yeah. That's not where I was going with that, Hambone. But yeah, I don't, I don't know that. I think he picked up a little. He's got some stories about picking up, so you'll have to listen to Rump Chat to to hear that story. I don't want to listen to Rump Chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why not? No, it's 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 Hambone. Just <laughs> the sound of his voice. I like Rump. But. Just just grates on me. That's yeah, just like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> I hope um, he hears this. Hambone, if somebody exerts this little sixty seconds out and sends it to you, just know yeah. he's been equally as hard on all of us. <laughs> so no, there's yeah. a there's a special place for Hambone if I want to get nasty. Oh yeah? Yeah. Why is this? What's what's your what's your beef against Hambone? I just there's something about the guy. No, I'm just yeah, I wish he was here. Yeah. He's 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 married, you know, Sadie. Yep. My sister. Yeah, that's my uh does all my social media and probably yep. my closest friend and I've known Hambone a long time and I will harass him to his face just as much. <laughs> yeah. I wish you were here so I could say this to your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a real friend. Yeah. That's no, a be, real friend. especially because the way he throws it back. Yeah. Oh my God. He's a smart ass. So back to this, Donnie, do you want to share the numbers? Yeah. yeah let's hear it. I lost 1400. Okay. Which, you know, if I would have been in Vegas for two weeks, it would have cost me that much to be there anyways. You right. Know? So that's yeah, how, you pretty that's much had a free trip. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You pretty much had a free trip. Yeah. I had the money to spend. Right. But since you weren't paying your expenses, you could have kept the $1,400, I feel hey, like. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, let's not... <laughs> what's Willie say? Don't get lost in the details. Right. You can't <laughs> win if you don't play. I could have easily won 1400 bucks. Yep. If he had been at a different He could have been a success story like uh-huh. RJ. and won 30000 <laughs> Those one twenty thousand. That's what makes Las Vegas twenty thousand. Yeah, yeah because <laughs> stories like that. Stories like that. I told DB before we even left. I said I'm gonna win so much money there this year. Like I'm not gonna quit my job, but I'm probably not gonna show up at eight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just I'm just setting the tone. The here. other thing is like so like I got I got up like twenty five hundred at one point on blackjack. Uh huh. Really. And then, I, cause like I would just do you, now. I do you have a system? Like, Are you like a math guy? And like, no, nope, I'm a double I'm down guy. Cards. If you, if oh, I started if, watching videos while we were out there. <laughs> after after you lost the fourteen hundred. Yeah, I told Donnie, I was like, what if you go back all year, count cards, and just come back and get your money back next year? And it was like two minutes later. I heard he was watching a video, and I just thought he was on Instagram. And then I was like, and it was this guy giving a tutorial on how to count cards. <laughs> I was like, oh, my man over there. No, my system is double down all the time, no matter what. Like, she could be showing an ace, and I'm going to double down. Like, if I get a 9, 10, or 11, I... I got a 3, I'm doubling down. No, 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 down. But, but for real, though, like... I'm if showing she, 7. If she's showing a bus card, like... I'm I'm not gonna double down on an ace, but if she's showing a bus card, and I get eight, nine, ten, or eleven, I will absolutely double down every time, just because I feel like now you got more information. You got more information. You know what I'm saying? Like she doesn't have twenty, so she could maybe get there with that next card, but like right now she don't have twenty. If she's showing a ten or an ace, like so the proof the proof that your system works is how much money have you made on this system? Well, so a dealer <laughs> told me this, and he was like, "We Don't were never tell anybody how much you lost." We That's were in <laughs> uh, at South Point, and he was just like, "Man, 
you're never going to beat Vegas betting the minimum, you know, because eventually like the odds catch up to you. Right. When you get that makes on sense. a roll, you got to put more out there. And like, you got to all of a sudden, that makes sense if you're a dealer talking to a player, <laughs> <laughs> but for real, if you At think South about <laughs> it, if you think about the odds, if you're going to sit there for six hours, you might get up and, and you're playing the minimum 10, $20, you yeah. might get up five or 600. But if you sit there long enough, you're going to give it back to them. Yep. But if you get on a run and you know when you're on a run and and you're going up and you start at twenty dollar hands and now all of a sudden, you know, two minutes later you're betting a three hundred dollar hand and you win five six in a row and then you double down when you know like the 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 odds have changed because you know her card and you double down on something now all of a sudden it's twelve hundred dollars in three minutes. That's that's when I think a guy can maybe win some money, and so that's what I do. Like if it's it's monopoly money. You got to think about it like that. Because if you go sit down at a table with $200 that is your last $200, you're going to treat it like it's your last $200. Right. But if you go up there and like it's like $200 and like I do not care if I lose this and it's like fake money and like which is what the USD is anyway. Don't get us started on that. But if you treat it like monopoly money, well, then all of a sudden you'll make decisions based on your cards rather than I got to win or I'm going to go broke. So that's the other thing I think like, um, and then just me, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to teach anybody, but that's what, that's what I do. Well, it's interesting you brought that, you know, you sent me that. Each year I win more and more. You sent me that podcast the other day about the, uh, um, real estate and the financial system and stuff. And you, you, (laughs) as you say that, I'm talking about monopoly money. I was like, well, yeah, it's, this already is. is. (laughs) Yeah. Well, (laughs) Money isn't real, and people don't get that. Money is whatever you and I decide it is. You and I agree that the $20 bill that I hand you is the same thing. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, And yeah. outside of that agreement, you know, so it's like, well, so this what's is, the difference? This is an, an analogy that kind of blew my mind. A guy that was, he's, he's always been investing in gold, and he's had gold, silver, and 22 bullets. And I'd asked him about the stock market. This is like 15 years ago, and he was like, I just don't, I don't invest in things you can turn off with a switch. Oh yeah. And I was like, okay. <clears throat> and there's two sides of this, but, but essentially he was like, he said, when you, when you invest in gold or land, you're maintaining your wealth. So if, if let's say one acre of land cost an ounce of gold in the year 1900, hypothetically that same acre of land should cost an ounce of gold in 2020, 120 years later. That blows our mind because, like, if you put the dollar amount to it, you know, um, like, oh, no, you could buy this for $15, this acre of land. Well, now all of a sudden it's worth $3,500. Like, no, I made I bought this $3, land. $3,400. And, no, 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 that's not what that means. You I didn't bought this land for one Bitcoin back in 2019. <laughs> that's <laughs> Hey, that's hey, you joke. You joke. But – uh Bitcoin, I think bit, some of those cryptocurrencies are the same way. They're a store of value where you can maintain your wealth where hypothetically, <laughs> but the USD is what changes. You know, gold is gold and there's only so much of it. Gold didn't change. The land didn't change. There's only so much of it. Well, the difference between that and, and the US dollar is, you know, it's backed by the government. You're saying you the believe... The full faith and credit of the United yeah, States you government. Believe, yeah, you believe the United States government will be here in 50 years. That's right. what you're That's what you're saying. Right. The government will still be here. They'll still be operational despite... But when you bet on gold, money. you're betting that if it's not here in 50 years, whoever is will value that gold. Yeah. Anyways, there's which a lot, is, there's a lot of which, people out there way smarter than us talking about this. That's a 5,000-year history that you can... <clears throat> it's a pretty safe bet. Like, people right. love gold. People have, I mean, like to our knowledge, all the history books are like, yeah, awesome powers. I like gold. <laughs> <laughs> is, but is that weird? <laughs> is it that weird? So it's kind of my thing. <laughs> anyways, whatever. I did not leave Vegas with twenty five hundred <laughs> extra dollars or gold. I left Vegas with four hundred and seventy five extra dollars. And Leroy, mm-hmm. down some. <laughs> yeah. No comment. That a little bit. <laughs> Leroy went there kind of like Donnie. I'm going to win so much money. No, I ain't never got to work for Dale. <laughs> I went with X amount of money, and I was like, all right, this is what I'm willing to lose. 
Lost and that. Then he lost it. <laughs> and then I was like, I could lose a little bit more. And how long how long did that take? Uh I didn't gamble the last day. So Yeah. Three so days. You had, a, I, you had a three day ride. I don't think that That's I, more than most people get out of Las Vegas. I, I don't say. believe I have a gambling problem either. Like I didn't gamble. I was up four seventy five like I wanna say Thursday and we didn't leave till Sunday. So like I just sat there and you know like <clears throat> I was fine. But if you were up twenty five hundred and then you get, so I didn't just go down to four seventy five. Like I went down like yeah, I was down nineteen hundred, <laughs> and then I got back up to four seventy five. But I think that like once you go up and down like that, if you're able to just like stop in there, I think that you got some self control. Yeah. Where, where, there's that word if, if you're able to stop, <laughs> you got to know yourself. Well. Yeah, you're right. I know myself too. That's why I don't drink alcohol. Do you enjoy? Do you enjoy the process? Do you enjoy gambling? I do. I, I, it's just fun. Okay, it's just, uh, it's it like, is fun. This is, see, this is just a perspective. Going to go have fun. I haven't heard any of you guys bring up because I will trade my my money for experience. I'll take guaranteed loss, like that's that steak dinner I had, <coughs> you know, at the parks. I'm guaranteed to lose all. And it was not cheap. Right. All that money. I loved every minute of it. And yep. one could argue that, like, you need right. that for nutrition f- to sustain life, but you could get that at first for $8, <laughs> yeah. and it's all you can eat. Yeah. So that's out the window. But, um, yeah, I'm willing to pay some money for that experience. Maybe not $1,900, though. Right. <laughs> but but look at it like going to the NFR, buying premium tickets or I going will to a pay, football game. I will pay my – or entry fees. Yeah, if if that's your thing and you're enjoying yourself, right. you know, but I don't like gambling as much as I do rodeo, so I'm not willing to put down that much money. I'm talking about your buddies here. <coughs> no, it's just, it's enjoyable to sit down <laughs> at a about table me. with. We're done with this you. This is the Dale Brisby's podcast. <laughs> Fun to sit down at a table with exciting people. Like, like they're rodeo, excited guys. to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Playing. Like it's it gets loud and everybody everybody's having a good time. It's right. I don't mind losing a hundred dollars to sit there with those guys for forty five minutes and enjoy the, it. The night that you and J B burned through all that money. Oh, that was a that, blast. That's a story you'll carry the rest of your life. Oh yeah, for sure. but sometimes and you didn't really pay for it. Sometimes no. when you're down <laughs> I got all the benefits however much. without actually losing the money. Right? <clears throat> Sometimes when you're down however much and you're like, all right, I need to go to the room. And then they walk around the corner. It's like, gosh, darn it. That I want to hang me. out with you. <laughs> that yeah. happened to me the But first I know it's going to cost me. Is it worth $400? <laughs> right. Would I pay $400 to hang out with you, Sterling? And yes, I will. Darn it. I, I did it. I just... <laughs> Lefty's one of those guys. I like to if Lefty's on a roll, he's fun. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's how I look. That's how I look at that gambling experience in Las Vegas. Is like it's like paying for drinks, uh, paying for dinner, paying for tickets. You guys are hanging out with your bros and having a ball. That's, that's worth the money. That's why Sterling says if you break even, it's a free vacation. I try to live by that motto. Which one? If you break even, it's a free vacation. Let's see but if it's not, it's still more on fun. <laughs> 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 right? It's it's uh <clears throat> that is such the reason why it hit it's home for Rodeo Cowboys is like man, you will forget about all the expenses. <laughs> you win that first check for $173 and you're just like oh, you forgot that it cost you sixty three hundred to get there, you know, like it's <laughs> yeah. like Let's see how much. How's it going? Oh, it's going pretty good. <laughs> going pretty good. Won me a check. Won some money this weekend. <laughs> what you know? No, cover, well, cover actually, fuel, you're still sixty six hundred in the hole. Like in any other business, like everybody's like it's going pretty bad actually. <laughs> but like rodeo cowboys are like, oh, you know, uh, won me a check this weekend. Yes. Yeah, but it, it's a whole lot more exciting when you're when you're betting on yourself than how the cards fall. Yeah. Right, one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. So. I I think it would be tough for you know them get like especially if you win you win around well you're busy enough that you don't probably do a ton of gambling but you win a couple of rounds and then it's easy like you know you got a check coming at the end of the week drop five six grand on a blackjack table oh yeah. they don't give it to you like right after you get some money up front <laughs> walk into the casino with the big check to the cashier's <laughs> cage. <laughs> Y'all take this. Let me well, just the rodeo is not over. Right yeah, yeah, they don't know. They don't know how much you won yet. Yeah, 
Because <laughs> Dale Brisby, I'm going to win every round if they let me enter. But they got me fined up. How do you feel about the NFR altogether? Because this was uh, this is a big deal because we got shut out of Las Vegas last year. And there was a lot of us, myself included. I spent a, I spent a ton of money on, you know, we sponsored nine events, we sponsored the broadcast. And I was a little apprehensive. And to see those doors open, you know, especially the convention center, people flood in. Yeah, the convention center, like, yeah. No, I thought overall, <laughs> I, I thought it was great. Yeah. I thought it was really good. The, you know, judging by the, there's places, the Mirage has always been a hit for an after party. Mm. But, like, there's places on the strip where, like, that'll get hot and cold throughout the years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and right now, like, the Mirage is the absolute place to be. Yeah. And it's because they they do, and they do it right. Like, if I were to ever put on a rodeo, it, yeah, let's get this stock contractor to that stock contractor. But really, it's all about, like, who's going to play the concert afterwards. Yep. And the Mirage does that correctly, and I the, believe. And the MGM and so, used to be the hot place. It, it, at one time. And the guys... You know, but I remember were, even then, like, like when the MGM was a spot, like, yep. the Mirage was still a spot. Absolutely. You know? It's always been a contender. But, um, so... And then those guys, a couple of those guys move over to the new place, to the uh, um, resorts world. Yeah. And that just opened. Right. That place it's, is crazy cool. Yeah, it's... it's I nice. You know, and, and they're... It, it's that it's same garage, guy. It's not like it's they cool. don't know how to treat rodeo people. Yeah. You know, they did. Right. But did you spend some time over there? I didn't go over there. I was going to go watch Weston fight, but I didn't make it. I was pretty tied up. I uh, I, I basically just blew through there. You know, nothing was going on at the time. I ain't even seen a picture well, of it. Everything's shiny and new. Yeah, and, it's brand spanking oh new. Oh, my God, yeah. But, um, yeah, I but think. But they're going to try that, too. But everybody wants a piece of the action, but. I, you're right. The Mirage has been, and South Point have been very consistent. South Point's always really, I mean, like, <laughs> I like, I really like the South Point because, like, everything's there. Yeah. Obviously, it's got to be because it's so far from everything. Yep. But once you get there, you can stay there. Yep. And uh, the cheaper tables, and then it's just, you know, the stock contractors and the bullfighters stay there. Yep. The team ropers for the World Series right. stay there. So, like, yep. It's a, that's that's probably the most concentrated area of cowboy hats. Not to mention the uh, no buckle question. ceremony, the convention for the contract personnel. The uh, they'll have some after parties there. That the Justin uh, that they'll have some fundraiser stuff during the day. Mirage yeah, is has if a big you party like down there. if you like rodeo, the Mirage is a pretty good place to. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The South Point is also a pretty. If you're <laughs> yeah, especially if you're coming from a place, a rural place, and you're not you're not into big cities and you're a little leery about Vegas in general, go to South Point. You'll be so at home down yeah. there as a cowboy. South Point's are, I've, I've stayed South Point quite a few times, but um, I'm going to go probably um, later in the spring or summer and I, I'm, I got to go back to Mirage. Like, And I'm not going to hit them up. Like, I'll pay for the room. But um, So anyways, the, the buzz, the afterlife buzz was pretty – happening there 450,000 people come to the come to Vegas for the NFR Isn't that crazy? and it's only they'll only fit uh 18,000 in the Thomas and Mac per night so yep. if you do the math like if it's a different person in each seat yep. every night it's only you know 180,000 people so there's a bunch of people come there that don't watch the rodeo like Donnie and I and Leroy and I like well you know, they we don't go they don't the go to Thomas and Mac but they're Absolutely. there for the rodeo but yep. they don't go to the Thomas and Mac so um but then the the shops were good, numbers were good. That was all pretty, you know. And and really, the only ball busters like it was with exhibitors. Yep. Like the actual people work in the booth. Mm -hmm. But as far as like people, and and some some places they weren't strict on people, but but others they were strict on us, like wearing uh, diapers on our face. Well, they had that crackdown. You know, they opened Wednesday night, which I thought was a mistake. And I, to everybody around me, you know, I'm in the sponsor area in the yeah. back and we all thought it was a horrible mind mistake. It. Well, what happened was they, they, they ran on social media, all the people walking in without, without diapers on. Right. And the city went nuts, but you know, the city soon figured out there were just too many of us. Right. And we were going to be there no matter what. But I know when JB, the night after that, that first wreck of his, yep. he, uh, uh, he came to the convention center for an hour to do a signing and I blocked the aisles and they were getting ugly. Like fire marshal 
and everybody, and they were trying to push people out of the aisles. <laughs> like, oh, he did a signing for you? Not for me. Yeah. No, this is for uh, a friend of mine. Um, yeah. Who who does uh, social media um, for uh, um, Teton Ridge? Oh yeah, gotcha. And, yep. And he had promised to go there, but I mean that wreck was bad. You know, you yeah. remember he was all right, right, busted up. But I think part of that was he wanted to prove, you know, because he's JB Mooney, that he was still okay. So he came to the convention center and just blocked everything up. It was hilarious. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Well, I doubt he wanted to prove it to like, I don't know. Those appearances well, he had, for him he had agreed to. You know, right? Yeah, he friend. wanted to. Yeah, yeah he, to he wasn't stay gonna, true to his word, but like totally. That it, that's what it was. I doubt he was trying to prove anything to anybody. It was probably just him staying true to his word because yeah. those signings are exhausting for that man. You oh, know? terrible! Like, so um, and we had like answering the same questions over and over, like man, how'd you? And then everybody thinks they're you know bull riding expert. Well, because and, of the situation, they're like, no, you 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 step in the booth, you take a picture, and you get out. And they were pushing people, right? Like literally pushing them down the aisle, like out, you're done. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then of course, uh, poor Samantha. And I were chasing Jagger, Jagger all over the yeah. building, <laughs> but that poor trying to give guy. him bull riding advice and then asking him where Dale is. Yeah, I'm sure those were the two. Now we ended up chasing him up and down the escalator, hoping, you know, because we could at least contain him. Yep. <laughs> I tell you one <laughs> thing. It's got so much energy. <clears throat> I tell you one thing. He sold the crap out of some merch over the Black Friday and. The NFR, like, man, then people come after his merch. Mm -hmm. And he gets a, you know, I give a very generous, you know, like, it's 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 pretty. The licensing fee, I'll say this, licensing fees are like if, uh, if Zippo Ladders is going to have, do a Zippo Ladder that has mossy oak on it, um, standard is 7% standard most of the time like the the zippo would try to argue for five and like if they were negotiating and mossy oak would be like no it's got to be 11 well seven is pretty standard on a licensing fee across the board <clears throat> i've got a licensing fee with with someone it's six percent and um yeah jb's is 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 much more significant than that i'll say that but He's so easy to work with right. for those of yeah. us that know him. And he's not. Well, and he didn't like put his foot no, down. That was that's just what me gonna say. He's offering it, you know, but, and, and, it, you know, and, and the reason why I do that, it's like, relationship. you know, he and I, we do so much content together. Right. Um, I get, I get my expenses paid, you know, we're able to pay for all the stuff, the designs and pay for everything. And then, uh, um, but they're buying that poster because. Totally. JB's face is on it, you know, except the one well, where we've my got, face is also on we've it. We've got all that stuff <laughs> that we shot for Netflix at Craig's that day that we're about to release. Yeah. Full of the two of you. Right. But, um, so anyways, the point is like, when did he, when did he ask about that? When did he ask me to take that over? I don't know. It was a few years back. Yeah, it's been a little bit. But, uh, I do the same thing with Leroy, Cody Webster. <laughs> And mm -hmm. true person, same right. same deal. If I were to scale and do that for a lot of people, like I would not replicate this deal. It would be very detrimental to my no, but my my game. It's JB. But he brings he brings the the eyeballs. Yeah, it works. Why, it works for both of us. Him. But uh, and yeah, he, to his credit, you know, not only did he show up there, but we were doing those. Uh, but, we had been doing those videos every day of the highlights for the day, and he face all busted up. Sat there, you know, as professionals JB does, and looked in, in Ben's camera and did a, uh, I'm JB Mooney, and you're yep. watching the Total Feeds channel. Yeah. I mean, that guy had to hurt. Right. Just well, walking in there. I guess the, the whole reason for me bringing that up, like, it, it was a random thought. I kind of went down a rabbit trail about licensing fees, but the reason I brought that up is, like, I've I've been doing his merch for, like, three years, four years, I think. Right. And so I've got to watch, and his approval rating right now just – if you want to call it that, it's through the roof. Yeah. Through the roof. Yeah. People want JB Mooney more than they ever have. They were eating it which up. Which is wild to me, you know, because like he goes to smaller rodeos. Yeah. Gets on, he gets on a lot of rank bulls, but night after night, you know, 
you know, bull for bull, then, you know, he was getting on ranker bulls yeah. day after day at the, at the PBR. Yeah. Chad's bulls. <laughs> but something about that switch, man, that Joker's approval rating is through the roof. Oh. And, and well, nobody now, cares that he's, he, because he's going everywhere. Now everybody gets to see him. He's going right. to the little, the little rodeos, the big rodeos and all of it, instead of somebody having to pay 60 bucks and then drive five hours to go to the closest city that they're having the PBR at. Like he's coming to their town now. Yeah. So it's because I mean, he because he loves it. Oh yeah, that and I mean rodeoing, which I guess we we talked about it with him on a podcast. I think where he was saying like he likes to be on the road. He likes yeah. he likes traveling. He likes being around all the the bull riders, the bareback riders, and everybody yep. else. It's, it's yeah, he like, likes being around cowboys. Yeah. Well, I mean, he gets to and go there's back there's where cowboys in the PBR one hundred percent, but like. You know, it's just a different vibe, and the guys in the PBR would tell you that too. It's just a different vibe. That's all it is. There's a time and place for both spots. You know, Boudreaux was primarily rodeos, and now he's riding in the PBR, and and there's a time and a place for that. And yeah. JB's in at the spot in his career where he wants to enjoy riding at rodeos. But going and, down and the road I will with say this kid for the record: right, JB on a plane right. is 100 percent healthy right now, and if you ran one under him, he would ride it. No, no doubt about it. So. It was pretty obvious to see that he was pretty banged up and sore starting in that third, but fourth round. But I've never met anybody like him. He's 100% right now, though. So no, He's definitely. as tough as any person I've ever met. Yeah. So What were we going to say, Donnie? I don't even remember. <clears throat> yeah. Something about licensing fees? No. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie's got some licensing fees. Yeah, you started coming. down that, that road, and I saw him tune out over there. What? He better not tune out. He's I wasn't got tuning some, out. He's got some. He's got some. <laughs> he's got stickers. They got stickers. Yep. Have so. I seen them? I doubt it. I'll wear. I I'll wear it. one of Donnie's <laughs> stickers. Hell yeah. Yep. Hell yeah. I already put it on your car. So sweet. <laughs> Total feeds and what does it say on it? Uh, it's it's a. Life he doesn't the, remember. Life of the Bardy, <laughs> but we're working on some other. Yeah, we drive. got some. We got some stuff in the works. It's, I'm not saying it was a home run right out of the Donnie's got some stuff in the works. So (laughs) it's, it's one of the ways that we're trying to, uh, you know, trying to, I don't know, bring value. Like it's just, it's a fun little side. Well, it's a side hustle. Yeah. Yeah. So for the, for the interns, but 2022, what you going to do in 2022? Yeah. You have a following. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I run into people to talk about you to me. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, it's a brand. He's got a brand. However many followers he has, you know, may or may not accurately reflect that. I imagine a lot more people know who you are than however many people follow you. Right. Mm-hmm. So like but but essentially like you've got a brand, Donnie Daytona brand, you know. Same guy, it's always women are asking me about Donnie. What's mm-hmm. up with that? This is red hair. Yep. They feel sorry Great for Great white him. buffalo. <laughs> 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 they like the red hair. <laughs> um what you going to get done in 2022? Holy cow. I have I have a ton of stuff that I want to do. I'm, I've been kind of giving everybody, you know, I got really sick and I've been giving everybody a chance to um, recoup during the holidays, but I, I have a ton of marketing ideas this year. Um, I'm going to do a whole series of, I, I've really gotten into watching those um, animated um, like YouTube channels where they teach you stuff, you know, but mm-hmm. it's all animated. I want to do that with all my dad's stuff because the stuff he does. Oh, I got you. His his the science behind what he does is so complicated. People yeah. don't get it. You want to document it? Yeah, but I want to do it, it when you do that. I want to do it with um, Some animation illustration because you can really control the you message. Can, you can illustrate what you he's take, talking about. Yeah, you take stuff that's super super complicated, yep. like nutrition, like like chemistry, and and make it. Uh, you know, edible, right to people. I, th- I, I guess I chose is that well, a good word. One hundred percent. Yeah, because you consume it. It <laughs> is. Like. It is because even on social media, people or or you know, people consume it. I don't it's think that's hard. legal in this state. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but it's coming. <laughs> we've got yeah, we've got like four hundred and fifty videos on YouTube. I've I've done lecture series with my dad. He's been on TV. You know, we used to do seven Rural America lives. Just churning out. There's, all the information is there, but it's complicated. 
Yep. And for him, just like now, if I just sit here and tell you guys about, you know, explain the Krebs cycle and in, in how you, uh, process your body processes carbohydrates or something, it's super complicated. And if I sat here and talked about it, you just glaze over. Uh huh. If I got cartoons popping up, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's a little yeah. more fun. 100%. I agree. Yep. That's a yep. big one. I I've got a lot of filming stuff that I want to do. You know, you we've talked about a, right. Uh, bunch of stuff that we seriously want to do yeah we've Big got stuff. some we've got some plans too some some ideas as far as like content and whatnot yep we got we recently got a, a new guy on the media team so um six total people uh Leroy, donnie blythe jordan willie and now um cole so we hope he likes to edit he hasn't ever done it before <laughs> but he's we're gonna get him started so yeah. he's Me- flying in today <laughs> Yeah, the media. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he called me yesterday. The media side of things is, uh, we, we've, we're starting to establish a, a, a pretty um, good team that got a good flow going, where mm-hmm. we can just like, you know, pump out more content. I need so. new cameras. The cameras think- are getting old. I'm gonna say that in front of everybody. It's all right, I said that yesterday. I, I like mean, our cameras. Ben and Zach, you know, what y'all they use now. Y'all couldn't have told me this, like. <laughs> Four I days ago, I did. <laughs> like right before the the stuff. Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't think those cameras. We can't. I don't think we can get what we get with those cameras. Sometimes those big cameras, like on yeah. on your shoulder, 100%. like I get in Dude, some you, balls out places with that. Yeah, camera. but they they also have the black magic and and Zach <laughs> rented me when we were up doing your your deal with the interns at yeah. Craig's. Uh, ben um, rented me the FX three, which is. Yeah, yep. It's the size of what you guys mm-hmm. have, but it has the same sensor as those big ones. They yeah. Use. There's just some tricky spots. What he's talking about is like this right, this right here is pretty inconspicuous and both these guys will run it and you got to know when to turn it on and you got to, you know, be kind of not sneaky about it, but essentially what you're trying to capture is authenticity. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, absolutely. You want people to be themselves. Yeah. And when you walk up with, uh, no the offense rig. to Ben, but when he's got a shoulder rig, did you see what he was and walking he's got around a with? Fishing hat on, Las and his Vegas? nose is uh, got the sunscreen on it, and he's got the cargo shorts. He looks like a cameraman. Yeah, and people are like, "Did you oh, see? That's a did you see his rig at the end? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That too. Like it's just hanging that camera. I don't balk at it. Head. I don't balk at it. But he of course, might. he's already six and you know six five. Right. And so he he can just walk in, you know, right through a crowd. It's hilarious. To These watch. dang cameras are durable too. Like they don't ever overheat. Like yeah, they that's freaking, a big deal. There, there's a lot of little guys. fringe maybe benefits. Not cameras, maybe just lenses. We do need new lenses. I agree. Like we, I I'm I think that you need to upgrade when it's time. But I'm just we have an argument. I'm just I think. Yeah. Yeah. There there's an argument to be made on both sides. Hundred percent. So. um but anyway, yeah, we've got some we've got some ideas. We've got some new kind of content shows coming out that we're looking forward to. That'll right. be fun. We've got, um, but really, like, I think we've all got like fitness goals, fitness pizza in my mouth. What? Yeah. And then uh, we started a Bible study. Had one this morning, and we want to do. I would love to be able to work out if they can figure out how to make my right arm stay together. You know, keep it attached to my body. Everybody's got an excuse. Modern, <laughs> modern medicine and your high high level of income. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I tore my my labrum when I was like twelve years old, and I never had it fixed. And, the, and they said it never healed, and it was full of arthritis and everything. And they went in there and tacked it all down and scraped all the bones down and all that stuff. Went through rehab, and then two years later, I'm back for the same surgery because I literally tore it all out. And now it's a year after that one, and I'm, I'm like, well, what's going on with this? And I saw him yesterday. He's like, well, I can see you tore your, your pectoral muscle. I'm like, I'm not even doing anything. I don't even work out. <laughs> you know, if I was him, you know, that would be one thing. But I don't even work out. Yeah. <laughs> Donnie's well, an animal. <laughs> I've been kind of lazy, but I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to motivate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you got on. I got I got motivated recently. I have, but I'm not. I, I, that's recent. Yeah, you can't drill out the past four months. You know? Yeah, we sold like my my brother and sister. My sister in law does all the online stuff, and 
and I was covering the orders, and I had a huge pile of orders of total people plus New Year's Day. Really? I'm like, oh, yeah, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take them vitamins. I'm going to start working out. Right. It's real. And if you go to the gym, you see it. Like, And they yeah. last. Like, there's not a parking place at the gym right the now. The first week, they really start to fall off. Like, And then. A about, week? Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. Like, they probably sign up for a year membership. Too. <laughs> I, I made myself work out. I got cleared like, uh, right before Christmas to like, I still can't do like push ups and chin ups or pull ups, but like, and you never did those before anyway. No, I freaking love pull ups. <laughs> I love me some pull ups. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but, um, I don't do a lot of push ups. Like, I don't know. I, 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 Push-ups are fun. Like, I'll plank, but I don't, I don't know. Not that that's the same. That's a back workout, but whatever. Uh, but, yeah, so, like, I was like, man, I'm going to I'm gonna have some Christmas food, and then I'm going to get started. So, like, a couple days before January 1, but I made myself get started just so I wasn't, like, a January 1. Yeah. Yeah. And guy, you don't want to be the guy that shows up on January, <laughs> yeah. January 1. And get my, a week early. I mean, like, 30th and 31st were not that intense of a workout, but. I got to tell you a story about chin-ups. So, <clears throat> I, was, I was on the swim team in high school and I, uh, I was trying to get to the air force Academy. Um, and, uh, you have to go through their PT deal as part of the application. Yeah. And so being on the swim team, I, you know, I had pretty good lats and stuff. And, and, uh, like after track practice every night, there was these, these pipes that hung, uh, under the bleachers and I would do as, you know, I do pull-ups until I just couldn't do them anymore. Yeah. And I was skinny. A little, you know, six one and like one seventy, so I didn't have a lot of weight to pull up. Right, and I, I was busting my hump. To, that helps. Yeah, to show Being off lighter. at this PT deal. So I get there, and that's the first thing I did was the, uh, was the pull ups, and I did twenty one pull ups. I'm like, I'm feeling pretty badass. Yeah. And then Guys, like, I'm special forces. I don't know if y'all know Yeah. This. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm, so I'm, I'm a SEAL. And then it's a different brand. Like I, I go right from that. I'm like, okay, now we can do the, you know, the push ups. Like, as many push ups as <laughs> you do in two minutes. And I, did, I it was like three minute break. <laughs> and I hit the floor and I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Your arms was, break. <laughs> it was, I don't. I don't even remember what I did, but it was I barely, barely scraped. By. That's hilarious. <laughs> God. Talk about having the wind, you know, yeah. out of your sails. Yeah, you were like, <laughs> and these guys were like, these guys were like, hey, this guy might make it. And then you do that first push up, oh. son of a gun. It's like, that. there's this big, yeah, this big sergeant counting me out for I the chance. Thought we had one. And then he sees me on the floor and I'm like, come on, come on. Is that it? Yeah. Is that it? That's all you got for me? That's funny. <laughs> It's like that 30 minute ab, that commercial where that guy orders a pizza and he turns on 30 minute abs. <laughs> when the pizza shows up, he's all ripped, right? But he's all small everywhere else. But he's got really I haven't abs. seen that. I forget what kind of commercial yeah, it either. was, <clears throat> but that's funny. Yeah. Uh, no, I just, you know, I was an old athlete. I would just like to work out just regular stuff. Just yeah. do some regular stuff, but I keep my age. Stuff keeps tearing. <laughs> right. I'm worse than JB. What you got? I don't even get on a bull. <laughs> for 2022. I don't know. You're supposed to set goals or something? You're not supposed to. I mean, <laughs> some people do. But. <laughs> no, just, there's a few things I want to do, but I haven't done them yet. I'll do them, then talk about them. My man. Do it, then talk about it. He's got some pretty badass leather work under his belt, if I can use that term now. I'm, pun intended. Yeah, pun intended. That gun holster? Oh my gosh! Oh my, yeah, that's that was fun a, to make. That should have gone to a museum. Yes, um, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that he's made that's just like lights out. What are you working Appreciate on? Appreciate it. No, uh, nothing right now. You finished the briefcase thing? No, I messed up on it. I got to restart. And oh, I'm just kind of, I don't want to restart it. So. Yeah, that's a big project. Very much so. But I wait. It's forty hours down the drain. Oh, you know what though? I could take it and be like the best briefcase I've ever seen because I know how critical he is. Yep. Oh yeah. I, I would like, still take. I got it. half a dozen I'd, belts I'd, from him. I'd that pay him. Pretty bad to the bone that he thought he messed up on. I was like, all right, I guess I'll buy it. From I can't you see it. I discount. I sat over his shoulder one day and he 
<laughs> he was banging away and goes, well, I screwed that up. And I'm like, where? Ah, I don't know what you're talking <laughs> where? about. His yeah. stuff looks amazing. He's only been at it for 12 years. <clears throat> so, yeah. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, what's the learning curve? 20? 12 years. 20 12 years. years. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you when I get there. <laughs> so far, that's that's where I'm at. Yeah, that's, that's why like it's enjoyable. I really do enjoy doing it, but uh, it takes a toll like, mm. on my back and my hands. Yeah, it uh, it's not as enjoyable when you get halfway through the day and you want to take an ice bath. Do you really get lost in the work? Like you, very much so. It's it's really easy to keep my head down and get to working, and at eight in the morning to look up and it's midnight. Like you completely Time. lose track. Oh yeah, that's when you're really sore. I bet that. Uh, yeah, I, I, at those days, I won't go back in the leather shop for a couple of days. I gotta let my my back and my hands. He rest. used to work for like some. He used to contract stuff, and so he'd go work for like a purse company or whatever. Right. And like he'd be down there for three days, and they would do leather work for three days, and then come back and sleep for three days. That stuff was what probably burnt you out. It really did, but it. It was so much easier because I didn't have to build any of it. I would just do the leather work, and then I would teach the other people in there that teach the other people in there that were getting started. I mm-hmm. just show them like, ah, oh, that's good, but if you do this different, it'll be easier kind of deal. Right. So I got double paid, like instructional and for the leather work. So the the artwork part is my favorite. But uh, what do you mean, like, like when doing you- the actual tooling? Okay. Like I when see it comes time to putting it together and everything like that, that's right. where um, I enjoy that part as well. But that's the part that I'm confident in my tooling. But my building, I'm confident in it. But that's where it's like if you mess up, you just you're gonna ruin the next. Mm. You know, you got to start over. You got to retool it. And I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's not like wood. You just oh, I'll just put some putty in it and right. back up a couple. Yeah, steps. you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, the stitching and the gluing and putting everything together. Is uh, it's just tedious sometimes. It's old, but kinda makes it. Been thinking about getting an intern. I don't have a place for it yet. It'd probably be like a year, two years down the road. Getting somebody that wants to build that doesn't care about the artwork. They just want to learn how to build the stuff. That's that's what I need. And you, you <laughs> prefer having you know a new something thrown at you all the time or do you like to kind of get in a rhythm and do all belts for a while and stuff or what um i like to learn to make something new but then i like to i like to perfect that before i go to the next thing okay i make sure that i can sit down and turn my brain off and i can build the whole thing start to finish without having to uh so here what do i do you know what i mean yeah uh belts and wallets i can make those all day uh purses stuff like that i can make those all day mm. when it comes to like the bigger stuff briefcases saddles boots um have you done a saddle i built a couple saddles two really yeah and his his first saddle that was for me it was a gift mm. i would put it up against any other leather makers like first saddle okay like this it looks like he's been building saddles for a decade wow it is so bad to the bone where is Had it like a really good have I seen it's, it? it's in the we ride it every day it's oh, in the attack room. Okay. Yeah. The um, second one I'm saving for kids down the road. Yeah. The second one's really cool, too. The second one's rough out and mm-hmm. uh, got some leather. I mean, got some feather tooling in it. Like, he tooled feathers in some certain spots. Like, on the swells, it's pretty bad to the bone. But he, uh, uh, there was a, a saddle maker that lived, like, right down the road from us. And he's since passed but it was like it was a good place that you know he was just kind of like a kind of a hole in the wall kind of shop but like right. super knowledgeable and right had been doing it for 50 plus years and so Leroy just slipped in there and the guy kind of fell in love with him and so taught him the ropes and it was fun they put that first saddle together so it really and I'm you know let him talk about it but to me it seemed like it made you understand why they'll charge four thousand forty five hundred dollars for a handmade tooled saddle for sure well i mean it's ray like a lot of guys will use ray didn't use one but clickers like you got a big metal die that pushes down on the leather cuts your leather out and ray would never he would never let me touch a clicker i had to cut everything out with a round knife 14 ounce leather it's super thick right and uh three months is what it took to build and a lot of guys will build a saddle in a week but everything's hand tools no no machinery sandpaper he would use 
uh, a sanding wheel, but he'd make me use a hand sander. Do it old school, and I did did use a sewing machine, like stitching the stitching the skirts and everything else. But yep. uh, where everybody else would use that sewing machine to stitch other stuff on, he made me hand sew and learn the right way. And then on the second saddle, still made me do everything by hand, but he let me use the the sanding wheel. He didn't make me hand sand it. Did you appreciate it then? Very much so. I learned a lot from him. Um, but uh, you you got it on the second saddle. You understood what he was. Very much. He got it on the first saddle. It was Ray helped me out a lot. Like he would, like on the ground seat, you sit there and scive on a ground seat, and it's you carve out half your day just to just to do that. And he showed me a little bit. He um, did a few few scrapes on it, and then just showed me what you're looking for. When I was building my saddle, he was building one right next to me. Oh, so it was okay. He's he would wait until (laughs) I got in there to start the next step. And uh, if I had cow. trouble with something, he'd put his hands on it and help me and get me out of the bind that I put myself in and then uh, make me, show me how to fix it and then help me fix it. But it was fun. The second saddle, it still took three months, but it was mainly because Ray's health was going down mm. and uh, he we needed to take breaks for him, okay. which was fine with me because we'd sit down and watch John Wayne movies and yeah, hang out, but... He passed about two months after I finished my second saddle. Wow. We were going to start a third, and after he passed, it just didn't, wasn't, wasn't fun yeah. without him being there. But That's he, pretty understandable. He, he left you with that knowledge. I mean, now t- t- for me to make another one, uh, it would probably take me five months. Mm-hmm. What now. would you charge for it? I mean, you'd have to charge. I mean, <laughs> the one to justify your time, you'd have to charge 7500 but, oh, for sure. But like that saddle that I made you, uh, if you were to sell it right now, thirty five hundred, right? Like used for the last what, however many years. That yeah. one that I have that uh, nobody's seven ridden seven years ago. It's been seven years. Dang. But yeah, that one that nobody's ridden yet. Nope. Eight. It'll be eight. It'll be eight this spring. Yeah. yeah. It'll be eight in May. You're right. Um, that, that second one, forty five hundred. It's they're built right, but it's not. You don't want to. You don't want to do projects on that scale. No, I don't want to build any more saddles. Yeah, I went to boot school with John Higdon. That was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, not really boot school. It's, it's kind of same thing. Older man has a shop in his backyard. He taught Dean Randolph how to make boots. Dean's the one that sent me to him, mm-hmm. and just fun. Just sat down and learning from the older generation was just a lot more fun than watching YouTube like I had been. Oh my God! Yeah, and <coughs> super knowledgeable. It's always easier to learn a craft like that when someone's right there answering questions. Oh yeah, YouTube is so beneficial and so helpful in a lot of yep. ways. But man, if you got, especially when you can get really, really specific, you know, like with editing a video, and you can you can ask a very specific question on YouTube about you know how to do something in a timeline with slow motion footage in 1080p or something like that. Like you can you know there's a video on YouTube to answer it. But um, I'm sure with like leather work and cowboy skills, it's it's not that way. You know, right. the, the videos are much more limited. Yep. So to have somebody there and and something like a leather work or a, I mean, like with on the computer, I think you can read a book, quote unquote, to learn it. But like if you're building a saddle or yeah. learning how to ride a horse or roping a dummy, like you got to do it. You can't read about it. You can't oh, for watch sure. a YouTube video. Well, and like, like in the artwork side, I, I went I apprenticed for a guy for. I wouldn't even call it apprentice. We were just buddies, and he'd let me come uh, in his shop for a week at a time, go in for a week, go home for two, go back up for a week. He's not doing leather work anymore now, but uh, in a year, I probably learned artwork-wise and leather work. I probably jumped up five years in the artwork side and spending a year in there with him. With the right Right. person. Oh, yeah. Well, when you're alone, and this is true of a lot of things, you – you can end up practicing mistakes. For sure. Because like, you don't know. Doing yeah. the same thing over and over and not really realizing, well, if I'd have done yeah, this different, writing, it wouldn't have been as bad. You know, any kind of cowboy work, but leather working. But um, drinking 32 ounces of sweet tea was a bad choice. I'll be yeah. right back. Yeah, just I, I did the same. Drink two bottles of water. I got to pee. But leather work, yeah, it's fun. Are we? Is this Keep a professional uh, podcast? What are we doing here? Yes, it is. <laughs> but my next deal is silver work. I like 
Seriously. I feel like, I do feel like I've I know that I've put my ten thousand hours in on leather work. Yeah. I don't, I'm not gonna call myself a master at it because every day I'm learning so I learn something new every time I touch a piece of leather, but silver work is what I think I wanna try next. No kidding. But not not that I've done everything I can do in leather work, but it takes me now it takes me about six and a half hours to fully tool and finish a belt, not including dry time. Like if if I could speed up dry time, you know, six and a half hours, I could knock out a belt, sell it for 400, 500 bucks. But uh, silver work, two hours, silver and some turquoise and a little bit of engraving on it, 500 bucks in two hours instead of all day. Right. But and I that and I'm, I'm very curious about it. I want to want to try it. I remember, you know, those of us, that, any of us that work with our hands uh, will understand this. I was talking to a, a really accomplished young woman who was a leather worker in Wyoming. And we were talking about that, you know, because I was a carpenter. <coughs> and she, she said it best. She's like, well, my hands will do what I tell them to. So I can, you could shift gears from leather work to, to tooling silver. I'm hoping so. I know yeah. that I've, I've been in a couple silver shops with some friends just messing around and they would show me like, well, just keep your elbows in, which it's completely different. Like the way you work and everything is it's a 180. Like when I do leather work, everything's up here. It's right there in your face. When you're doing silver work, your elbows are in, you're holding the steel and you're looking through a microscope. So it's, right. it's everything's going to be completely, well, that's how my buddy does it. I'm not sure if that's actually how it is, but my friend that was showing me, uh, yeah, I've seen. So we have some be some uh, learning curves, but friends of Total Feeds that are really, really good silver workers, and they have the giant, it's like this giant magnifying glass, and you know the spinning thing, and they're hanging over it. I think your eyes are just dry out of your head, staring that hard at those little details. Well, I think that, and the other <laughs> reason is I don't think my hands and my back are going to take as bad of a beating. But <laughs> sorry, I gotta go to the bathroom. Maybe the most gratifying pee I've ever taken in my life. <laughs> Gabe was in the bathroom, so you're gonna have to go outside. Oh, you're not, even if he's yeah, you say the word food and Gabe has to take a poop. <laughs> and it's bad. He takes like these weight gainers, like these yeah, protein saw, shakes. Like I know, I was up. gonna say a high protein diet. Dude, this joker <laughs> It's like you can you can think in your head, I'm not gonna eat the rest of this plate. I wonder if someone else at the table wants it and you, you look over and Gabe has like already perched himself and his head is like right here. And he's like, I'll take it. <laughs> well, he eats so much food all the time. And he, and protein, people don't understand protein. This is really confusing in feed business because, uh, the marketing, you know, they, they have the percentage of the protein on the front of the bag, like for cattle, like 12%, 14%. People don't get it. Like 12% of what? Cause how and my dad always does the nutritionist. Well, how much protein do you need? It's it's not a percent. It's a certain number of grams. Right. And and, then, and, <laughs> and the guys that raise cattle, like, how do you know your cattle have enough protein? Starts coming out the back. That's what protein does because you don't digest it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's and like, the, well, you keep loading up on protein. You the can't way the, digest it all. The way the uh the way their stool looks can tell you how much of it they they need or don't need when yeah they don't store it right you don't store protein so when you've you've taken your limit in a certain amount of time yep gabe yep. <laughs> if you're listening <laughs> um dial it in dial it back yeah cuz you can only like i think after 30 grams in a serving i think you can't take in any more yeah right. a certain number of hours certain number of grams yeah certain number of hours. That's what I was always it takes, told. takes 10 hours. Yeah, that's why there's a the lot of the protein start. shakes, like the servings are like 24, mm -hmm. you know, because like... And if you well, double it, you're not getting double the protein. I see right. these, huh. these marketing gimmicks with, the you know, the bodybuilders and stuff where like they have these after workout protein shakes and like it takes 10 hours for the process to start. Like yeah. nothing's happening in the hour after you worked <laughs> out. Yeah. I don't know. I've gotten in the habit. Like I, pr I crave it. Like I, I know, a lot of protein. I know the thirty minute after deal. Like it, it may not be like a hard and fast rule, but like if I just worked out, like Pavlov's dogs kind of deal is kicking yeah. in, and like I, I, I would like rule work or not work the best right now. I'm gonna drink it right now. You yeah. know what I mean? 
So, but yeah, maybe, that's your maybe, that might be that might be too because I work out in the morning. That's your metabolism. That's your body saying, "Hey, we just burned a whole bunch of calories." Right. What are we going to do about it? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, Leroy's back. Do y'all have any life advice? Oh my God, I forgot we have to do this. Life advice. Uh, Donnie had something he was going to say. You know, he looked like he had. He always looks like he's got something to say. I always think I should. You do. This morning in the Bible study, I was like, I really thought like I would in. read a verse and I would look up. Like Donnie's about to say something, and then you would just be like, <laughs> <laughs> and not say anything. Well, I was thinking real hard about. I don't know. I was just. I've never read the Bible, like, and really dissected what it means. Uh huh. So I was really just kind of trying to figure out what I thought it meant, honestly. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. Well, that's fair. That's good advice. That's one hundred percent fair. Oh. It's it's. There's nothing wrong with that. I was just something about your face. <laughs> well, the time you called me out about it, I was actually getting ready to say something. But, so I was right that time. Yeah. But she had literally. I mean, I could have expanded on it maybe a little more but she pretty much said yeah. verbatim what i was getting ready to say so well like, mad respect that you don't have to be the one that says it yeah i mean if someone you know like, what i mean yeah yeah like i mean like some people just think they got to talk you yeah know? that's not our group no <laughs> where everybody's I'm, like super like we were i mean it was a good it was a good session i'm hungry that's my life voice we've we've talked about food and nutrition like seven times in this podcast and we haven't eaten steak all right i'll get you a steak and a listen protein to shake your body steak, steak a protein shake and some total equine ribeyes for everyone um total people eating with a protein shake well no we were talking about total feeds too so that we'll throw that in there if that's oh, what nice. he wants to eat what you got for life advice you do you boo boo yeah there you go Dale. yeah that's, that's a garden dig it Make it work for you. Oh, I like that one. That's a good one. I've never heard that. Did you make that up? Yeah, it's a friend of mine, Joe Dierte. Oh, yeah. Leroy Joe Gibbons. Dierte. Sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you saying that made me think of uh, Michael Scott. Like, yeah. You miss 100% yeah. of the shots you don't take. That's what I was going to say. Um, well, you didn't, so suck it. Uh, which Pam said that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So well, did uh it was Wayne Gretzky. The boss's names Michael Scott, so. Dale Brisby. It just crossed the, the, the as far as the you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take because it says under that dash Wayne Gretzky dash Dale Brisby. You know, and no or, offense or dash Michael Scott. Now it's gonna say under Michael Scott, Dale I, Brisby. I was a hockey player going growing up, so no offense to to the great one. What the hell does that mean? You you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. You didn't take the shot. Exactly. So you, yeah, miss, you, you miss. can't miss a shot you don't take. Yeah. Don't get lost <laughs> in the details, Corey. Wayne, come on, man. <laughs> well, again, <laughs> like Donnie said with gambling, like you're not going to win any if you don't get out there. Yeah, you might lose, but you're also not going to win. <laughs> Our doubts if you don't win, make us lose the good we might win. By fearing to attempt. It's so, like when people say, oh, everything, if, if, everything happens if, for a reason. But if you don't win, yeah. then you lost. <laughs> Well, but you didn't play, so you're a loser still. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm right on this. Help me out, Donnie. No, <laughs> <laughs> let's gamble. <laughs> you call me a dork. <laughs> yeah, you call me a dork. I'm not on your side. I'm not helping you out. Um, That's fair. So, what's your life advice then? When you come to a fork in the road, take, take it. it, Yogi Berra, <laughs> Donnie Day. <Daytona. laughs> Listen, this has been a big one for me in this past year. Listen, because I, I grew up in a time and place where we ignored pain, ignored our feelings, so I'm listening to my myself. So if you've had too much protein and you can't get out of the bathroom, you need to listen to your body. Yeah. <laughs> listen to the message, the subtle message it's telling you after your ninth trip. <laughs> yeah. In the, in the wee hours of the morning, I was listening. I, a random video popped up. It wasn't a page I was following, but I, because I had liked something else, this one popped up, and it was talking about the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. Robert Kiyosaki. Oh, yeah. And I've read the book, and I, I didn't really think of it like this, but, but this guy. hundred million other people. Yeah. This guy kind of broke it down, and he's like, the, the premise of the book is basically, and it wasn't Robert Kiyosaki. It was just somebody who had read it like myself, and he's right. like, it's like, 
you know, you can grow up in a poor household and you're going to probably stay poor. You can grow up in a rich household and mess up virtually everything, but still stay rich. Yep. But it doesn't have anything to do with the money. It has to do with the habits that you absolutely inherit. And so that's why, and he was saying, that's why the poor stay poor and the rich stay rich. And it made, you made me think of that whenever you were talking about like how, when you were hanging around, what's his name that taught you everything, yeah. you know, it, it advanced you five years because you kind of changed your surroundings. Yes. And so like by changing your surroundings, it doesn't have anything to do with the money. It doesn't have anything to do with the leather. It has to do with like those habits and those, those, uh, you know, who you choose to become, you know, and, and that's, you got to be willing to change and then you got to put yourself in the position to change. That's the same. The, the point I was making about whether it's sports or, or leather work or anything else could apply to what you just said. You, you keep practicing this, your mistakes Yep, because you didn't learn a yeah. better way to do it. If nothing changes, nothing changes. So, yeah. yeah kind of like Paul, you got to be ready to suffer. We can't all have a be blinded on the road to Damascus. Don't wait. Don't wait for that moment. No. Yeah. Make <laughs> your decision beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, thank you for listening to this episode of Rodeo Time, the podcast. We are uh, on to the next one, and the next one is 2022. So be looking out. Follow us all. Follow Total Feeds. Follow Donnie Daytona. Please follow Leroy Gibbons. The music that he's got coming. The leather work he's got coming. Just artistry. Follow Rodeo Time and uh, look out for us because, uh, Lord willing, it's going to be a great year. Oh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a good year. On to the next one, old son. <laughs>